Hi. Um, here's me in my little corner. Uh, but don't don't watch me. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about Scratch, and I would like to show you how to use it. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this directly, uh, the direct reason is that I've been uh, teaching some kids at school uh, how to use Scratch, and over the uh, over the past few years, I've had a couple of remarks from fellow YouTubers who've said that, you know, they're interested in programming but just never got into it, um, or they don't have the patience or uh, can be bothered to write code or learn how to do it. It's just, it keeps them from doing it. Now, I thought if you are one of those people then Scratch may be uh, a good solution for you to at least learn about programming. Uh, the most important thing as I see it um, is that you are able to approach uh, problems and analyze them and turn them into um, logical steps. Uh, uh, and that is what becomes um, that is what becomes uh, a program. You tell a computer what to do. If you you could um, you could compare it to uh, you know try to describe how to make uh, a pot of coffee. You know, you have to put the water in, you have to put the coffee in, you have to turn the machine on, then you have to wait, and then uh, the coffee comes out and you pour it. Those are steps that you can define. Well, you can approach writing games uh, uh, in much the same way. You have to learn to think about uh, what, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, how to keep a score, you know, when do you keep score, and how do you do that. Now, these basic buildings blocks uh, are what you find in Scratch. Scratch is uh, an online and currently free programming tool that will allow you to write fairly simple, uh, but still very you know, at the same time, very advanced games or programs or even like multimedia experiences. It's it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun to do. You know, you won't make like a three D first person shooter with it, but you can make a simple game like Frogger with it. Or, as I will try and show you today, uh, and make uh, a game that will. Uh, make this cat run around a maze and, and, and like get a princess. Now I'm just going to demonstrate uh, the tool. Uh, it's uh, You can uh, see which URL um, you can find the tool at. It's scratch.mit.edu. You can make a free account. Uh, you have to link it to your email address, uh, uh, but you can, you can start creating projects uh, straight away and you can save them, you can share them. Uh, there are about 12 million projects uh, shared at this moment, so uh, there's a lot of ways to learn. Now, I'm, I'm just gonna work uh, with an example that I that I have sitting here, so, um, uh, but, but it'll show you the basic uh, building blocks. Uh, as you can see, um, we have sprites. This is a little sprite, it's a cat. Uh, and I can move this sprite around the the play field. This is what you see here is the is the play field. You can play the thing full screen, and uh, uh, but this is just the way that we're building it. To the right here, you can you can see an area where you edit the sprite that you've currently selected. Now I've just moved the sprite uh, on the playing field. Um, and we are in the scripts tab. As you can see, the scripts tab for the sprite is empty. Um, a sprite can be animated. As you can see, it can have different 
costumes, as they are called here. There is a library of standard sprites, but you can draw your own. You can even record your own sounds in this uh, in this thing, as you can see in this. Uh, see what happens when we play this. That was a meow, a rather loud one, by the way. Thank you very much. Well, um, so what do we do? Uh, we're going to start by making this sprite a little bit smaller. So I click on the uh, on the symbol here that says shrink, and I click on the cat, and it shrinks. Right? If I move uh, the mouse pointer off, it, it loses that function. So there it is. There's our cat, and it's smaller, and it has no script. So what do we want it to do? Oh, we want to make a maze. So this is our stage, our backdrop, so to, so to speak. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to look at its... Um, this is called the backdrop, and I can draw something. So I'm going to make a line. I'm going to draw it right here. Oh, let's draw a line. Okay, so we start drawing the uh, the maze here, and as you can see, the maze has appeared here as well. And I'm just gonna start drawing the thing like that. Just go around the edges. So that's the start. Now let's see if we can uh, can draw a, draw a maze that sort of makes sense, right? Like that. Like that. Like that little dummy way here like that like that I'm just you know we could put a key in there later if you want let's just do it like that okay okay so we've done the um, done the thing. Now uh, I'm gonna name this thing. This is called uh, uh, Cat Maze. Let's just call it Cat Maze. And I'm gonna save it. Okay, so it's saved under my account now. Now we're gonna go back to our sprite, to our cat, because we're gonna we're gonna uh, want it to move. Um, so let's first uh, this this thing uh, the the nice thing is that this is event based you can um, you start the game by pressing this green flag here so when this is clicked you can say that it's it's called that uh, I want the cat to go to its current location uh, you can tell uh, what its current location is by looking at the coordinates here minus 208 minus 133 um, I can even pull it down a little bit and it's changed to 138 well let's uh, put that away go to XY so this places the cat when I press this it places the cat at the beginning of the maze now I want to be able to check a key press uh, and uh, have the cat react to that. So what I want to do is, um, and I want to, I wanted to do that forever. So I'm gonna take a forever loop here. This is just gonna loop forever. Now if a key is pressed then something should happen now what do we want to test I'm gonna go to sensing if 
a key, and I just drag that into this little hole here. If a key uh, left arrow is pressed, I want to change the X coordinate of my sprite. So I'm going to change X by minus 5. Minus 5 means left, right? Right, left. And I want to test for the right arrow key as well. So do another if then. I place it right there inside the forever loop. It's just another if statement, right? So if my key right arrow is pressed, I want to go to motion and change x my plus 5. Changing x means take its current value and add the change. You can do the other ones as well. For up and down. If then, if then. I'm just going to add two more if thens. Then I'm going to say if uh, up arrow is pressed, the other one is for the down arrow is pressed. Now, of course, if the up arrow is pressed, I'm going to want to change the Y coordinate, so change Y. Now I have to, the up arrow is a positive number, that goes up, and minus 5 goes down. So this loop says when I press the uh, the green flag, I set the sprite's position to these coordinates, which is the beginning of the maze, and then it loops around this forever, testing for the, each one of these arrow keys. Let's see if that works. I press run. I'm going to use the, the arrow keys. Right, left, right, up, down. As you can see, this works. I've made, it, it even does diagonal. See that? I didn't program that in, but that's just something that the, that the engine does itself. So, cool. I've made... Can the cat walk through here? Yeah, I can. I mean, it's, it's not detecting any, uh, any collisions yet, but, you know, it's, uh, it's working. It's working. Stop the program. If I start it again, poof, you see it's returned to its original position, and I can move it. That, isn't that nice? You know, we, we've already done something. And we haven't we haven't programmed a thing, you know. We've only clicked and dragged, and we've uh, uh, we've we we've, we've drawn some stuff. Now, what I want to do that if if it touches the wall, or if it touches any part of the um, of the red maze. Uh, I wanted to say something. I want something to happen, like say "ow" or, or whatever, and return to its position, right? Now, how do I do that? I'm going to do another if. It's just another if then, because it's another event that happens inside the same loop. Now, see what we have. Hey, if we're touching a color, if we're touching a color. So if our sprites touches, and I can click this color uh, th that's here, and I can just point my finger at the color that I want to sense, and which is the red color of my maze here. So if I touch the color red, then I want to say something. Or, or at least, maybe I don't want to sound. Uh, maybe I just want uh, a message to be... Uh, to be displayed something well here we go we say we don't say hello we say ouch so we've touched a wall then I want the thing to move back to its original position so we have a glide function here so we say glide in one second to these coordinates, and these coordinates just happen to be the current coordinates at the beginning of the uh, of the maze. 
um, this ouch um, balloon that is going to appear is going to stay there and un unless I say nothing <clears throat> sorry so let's see what happens uh, just save it now for the uh, I'm gonna start if I walk nothing happens if I touch the red whoop see it says ouch it glides back to the beginning and the ouch balloon goes away so I can go through the maze do my best not to touch anything la di da la di da and I make a mistake here oh. okay so we've done that now I want to have a goal sitting right here so I'm gonna add a new sprite I'm gonna choose one from the library now we can save any anything that we want we can reach any goal that we want so we could choose a donut or a fortune cookie or a frog what do we want a gobo I don't know what a gobo is oh there's a key here we can use that so let's uh, let's just save the girl right let's just uh, find a nice girl like Ruby here or do we want to save a princess we want to save Princess Terra yep we're gonna save Princess Terra so I'm gonna drag Princess Terra up here I'm gonna shrink her down but she's a little bit big there we go Princess Terra I can go into the details of Princess Terra and I, I think I may be able to can I ooh okay that's not what I wanted I wanted to flip her around but does that work yeah that works that's the rotation style okay so now at least she's looking at us okay so what do I want uh, to happen um, what we want to do is uh, when uh, when we touch the princess then I want to say that something like I've won or yay or whatever so uh, I'm gonna have to go back to my sprite to its script and just add another if then to it right I just if add it to the loop if um, if I'm touching a sprite, let's see. I think it's this one. If touching Terra or Tira, which if I if we're touching Tira, then I want to say something like. Uh, Tira's in another palace just as an inside joke and we want to stop the whole game stop all so let's see what happens I play my game oh sorry something is uh, amiss here What's a miss here? Touching, I think it's stop it. It appears to be oh wait a minute, see? I've added the stop all outside of the if statement here. Now we're immediately into the debugging. I made a mistake. I dragged the stop all statement and it repeats that forever. So at the end of all the if statements it just said stop all so that's basically what it's doing so I misplaced this one this should be inside the if statement of course so I start again Let's see if we can get to the princess without touching the wall well we can it's not a very difficult game we touch her yay uh, it's just not saying anything is it it's just not saying anything so that's that's not 
that's not on really but maybe the say and the stop are too close together so um, let's see if there's something else if I can say that for a Oh look, there's a oh there's a think. Oh, and there's a there's a say as well. So if I'm gonna, I want to re remove this. I'm gonna say hello for two seconds. Say, Tira is in another palace, and we're just gonna say uh, stop all. So it's gonna say that for two seconds, and then it's gonna stop. So we have to play the game again. not difficult at all and boom right tear is in another palace and then it stops so that's that's happened that's that's done so uh, this is this is uh, this is fun we haven't done much you know and, and we've already got a very basic game but you can see uh, there's a there's a whole host of other commands or motion commands you know we can have things turn we can point it in a different direction point it towards um, another sprite uh, we can point to the mouse pointer so the so the controller is actually something we can uh, oh we can even uh, test if we're on the edge of the screen set a rotation style we can switch costumes. See that? So we can we can uh, we can animate our sprite. Uh, we can change color effects. There's a lot of things we can. Well, there's sound stuff. We can even draw. We can control a pen. We have data. We can make our own variables. So you know, we we could make a score or a timer or. There's events when space is pressed, when the sprite is clicked. When the backdrop switches, there's so many options here. The control options, of course, we can repeat for a limited number of times. Uh, we have the if then, we have an if then else statement. We have a wait function, wait until a certain condition is met. We can repeat until a certain condition is met. When I start as a clone, I don't even know what I create a clone of myself. Oh, wow, a sprite can clone itself. We can send stuff. If it's a mouse down, answer. I I I I'm I'm not even sure if if I've used all of these. There's a username. Days since 2000. There are functions we can uh, we can use. Join, letter one, length. We can do equations. And we can even make our own blocks here. So that's. That's already interesting. Now let's try and uh, add like a monster that flies across the screen here that you have to. If it flies across here, you have to sort of run to keep up. I think that's a good one. Let's introduce a new sprite. A bat. Oh, let's do a bat. Yeah. Uh, but the animation style is more like this, right? So we're going to do the bat one. We call it bat. I think we have to shrink it down just a little bit. And I want it to go like this. You're, so I start it here. Now, um, now we have to animate it. Now we have to animate this thing. So we go, we, we, we selected this one. We go to its script. It doesn't have anything now. Let's see, uh, when this happens, um, let's move it to its current position. Let's start, start with that, so it always starts there. Again, I want this to repeat forever. At least I want to know that if, if um, well, I, I, let's start moving it first, you know, take, um, I want it to move, let's take two, I, I don't know how fast that is, let's see what happens, and I want it to, if on edge, 
bounce. Bounce means turn around. Let's see what that does. So when I press the flag, two things are going to happen. The mouse is going to be returned to this position, and this one is going to execute this script. There it goes. We've just made the game hard. Let's see what happens when it gets to the edge. Oh, <laughs> it has a very weird... Um, okay, let's stop this thing. Let's see if we can change its rotation style and go again see it starts there I want I think it does the same now as Terra did yeah awesome awesome now I can oh the game has already come uh, uh, has already become more stressful <laughs> It's now if it, 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 nothing happens when I touch it, so you know I, I have to have something happen when they touch. Um, I have all that all that stuff, you know, all the detection stuff already in this sprite. So let's do it here. Let's all keep it in one place. Add another if then to this guy's forever loop. Uh, if I'm touching, uh, where is that? If I'm touching the bat, then I want to have it say, uh, game over. Game over. Game over, dude. Game over. And what I could do is I could uh, move the um, move us to the original position. Let's do that. Move, go to, and that is uh, minus two hundred five and minus one thirty eight. So basically, we just move the cat. Um, I say mo go here, but that's not what I want. I want it to glide, right? I want it to glide to that position, right? Game over, and then at the end I want it to say nothing, say nothing, and it just goes on from there. So I start. Now, I am faster than the bat. Oh, shoot. I'm faster than the bat, so I've so I've sort of made it. But <laughs> that's actually pretty exciting. <laughs> but I beat. It. Oh, we have to test what happens when we touch it. Of course, <laughs> I wanted to save the princess, so I did this. Oh, it says game over, and then it slides back, and then I start over. Well, that's in. In a nutshell, uh, you know, you can uh, you can try and uh, keep a score. I think we've been going for about 20 minutes. We've made a game uh, with only a, f a, a very limited set of uh, uh, of constructs, language constructs. We have we've we've used some some positional statements. We've used uh, some event statements. We, ha we have like one forever loop and a couple of if thens. And that's it, you know, a couple of prints. It's very simple, but we've made a very basic game and we can make this harder. I could imagine making a Frogger game with this. I could imagine making a Space Invaders game with this. This, I think, is awesome. And I can say you know, being a professional programmer myself, that these constructs are what I use on a daily basis to to program stuff. Uh, but usually, most languages you have to type it in. You know, this is just all drag and drop. So this is, if you want to learn programming, but you don't want to go into uh, uh, learning code and learning syntax, then this may just be the thing for you. I'll, I'll put a link to Scratch in the description of this video. Um, it's free to use uh, currently. Uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, if that will remain that way. Um, 
uh, there's uh, this is the online version. There's also an offline version. You can save your projects. You can um, uh, share share them with the rest of the Scratch users. You can even download uh, uh, the code to your own computer. It's it's a uh, it's a very impressive uh, impressive tool, and I just wanted to introduce you to it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, please uh, subscribe to my channel if you like, uh, and but you don't have to, of course. It's just uh, what am I saying? You know, just I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have questions, uh, just uh, uh, put something down in the comments, and I'll uh, most likely get back to you. Bye-bye.